Hello, I'm Ben Byram Wigfield, and this is my introduction to using Dorico notation software for anyone who's already familiar with Finale. In this video, we'll look at write mode and how to enter and manipulate notation. First of all, let's look at selecting. Every single object is a thing that can be selected individually, and you can filter different types of objects from the selection. You can duplicate or move any object to the next staff and perform other operations like swapping notes and creating reductions. There are all kinds of functions for different types of notation. When you start a new document from scratch, you'll get this. Now, the first thing to note is that there isn't a time signature, but you can still enter notes. Dorico works very well with open meter music. However, while I can place bar lines into the music, I can't add a whole load of bars yet because obviously there's no set length of a bar. The other thing to note is that you haven't got a key signature either. Dorico makes a distinction between no key signature and C major. What's the difference? Well, ask Arnold Schoenberg. It makes a difference for things like transposing the whole piece and for which enharmonics are favoured. Another thing to note is that unlike Finale, changing the key signature by itself doesn't transpose the notes, nor does copying the notes to another section in another key. If you want to transpose, there's a function for that. You can use the palettes on the left and right sides of the window to enter notation, but the quickest way of using Dorico is with keyboard commands, and particularly with popovers. These are like separate tools for each type of notation, into which you can type simple commands to get what you want. Let's use some popovers to give us 4-4 four four with a one-beat pickup, E-flat major, and 56 bars, and a tempo mark. The jump bar is a great way to find commands if you can't remember where they are. Just press J and start typing. The first thing in note entry is that the numbers used to set note durations are different. Dorico uses 6 for a quarter note, when in finale it's 5. For what it's worth, Sibelius uses four. It is possible to change the keys used for the durations in preferences. In fact, you can change or set a key shortcut for every command in the whole app. But I'd try getting used to it if you can. Note that you can use the same numbers to change the duration of existing notes, as well as to enter new ones. This means you can do things like creating dotted rhythms from even notes just by pressing period. If you've entered a string of notes in the wrong duration, then you can turn on insert mode and correct them. Don't forget to turn off insert mode afterwards. Dorico does pitch before duration like speedy entry and pitch after duration like simple entry. It also does live recording to a click track with good quantization. The real difference is the use of a duration grid with a carrot to select where you want to enter something. You can enter notes at any position on the duration grid, and Dorico will automatically fill in the rests around them. Press space to move the carrot forward by the current note duration, which allows you to set values that are different from the grid, for example. Now, I can move this note through the bar using Option, right and left arrow, and you'll see that Dorico is pretty clever in setting the correct types of rest durations wherever we put the note. Let's move on to tied notes. While you can build tied notes in the usual way, one note, a tie, and then another note, once notes are tied together, Dorico treats them as a single object of the total duration. This has some advantages, so, for instance, you can enter a duration that's longer than the bar has room for, and you'll get a tied note over the bar line. It also means that if you enter, say, a half note in 12-8, you'll get a tied note over the compound beat. 
move it through the bar, and Dorico changes the form of the duration according to the meter. Dot it, and it will become a single dotted half note, if it's in the right place. There are options to configure how Dorico groups note durations together. But if you want to make an exception, you can use force duration, this G clamp icon or pressing letter O, to enter notes exactly as you want them. You can also use force duration to explicitly enter rests. For instance, if you want to show the exact position of a fermata in an empty bar. One question often asked by new users is, how do I enter dynamics in the middle of a long tide note? This is easily done, and again, uses the duration grid. Enter note entry mode, navigate to the beat position that you want, and then enter the dynamic you want. For a hairpin, you'll need to press space to advance the carrot for the length of the hairpin. A quick word about voices, or layers, in Finale. Dorico starts with only one voice, and you can create as many as you need with Shift-V. You can toggle through any voices you've created with V. These keys work not only in note entry, for notes that you're about to enter, but also on selected notes, to move them to another voice. I hope you have found this video helpful. Please join me in the next video, where I show you how to import your existing music from a Music XML file.